Hello. Back in the day, I used to send out an email every week to people on my email list, and I would write, uh, you know, a little funny story, or I'd write something about myself, or I'd just write. I used to write. So what I'm doing again is writing every week to the people on my email list. If you would like to receive said writings from me, sign up right here. If you sign up for the email list, I'm going to send you a link so you can download every song I've ever professionally recorded in the last 20 years. Sign up for the email list, get free stuff from me, and I look forward to writing stuff. And I look forward to you reading it. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, we're rolling again, and this is episode 23 of the podcast Subcast, and I just want to say, hey, we're back. We're back. Um, yeah, this is my apartment, and, and hey, we got some lighting, actually, this time. Uh, the, what I noticed about the last intro is that it, it, there wasn't any lighting. We got some lighting, and so now everything should be crisp. Got the autofocus kicking. Got the mic where I want it, and uh, yeah, my shirt says, fuck racism. I went into the the office where I got my insurance and there was a woman working there and she said what does your shirt say because all she could see is fuck in big letters fuck and then I said racism it's a fishbone t-shirt fuck racism that's a fishbone thing and it's a it's a thing that I think everyone should adhere to fuck racism but um without getting too diverted we're going to get back into it. this is a very special episode this in fact was an episode this uh, 30 plus years in the making when I was a little boy I got a videotape, a VHS tape, and I don't know who I borrowed it from. It was in middle school, and I think I might have borrowed it from Nick Paterin. Shouts out to Nick Paterin. And uh, it was called Serial Killer. It's the soundtrack, the original soundtrack to Serial Killer. And Serial spelled C-E-R-E-A-L. And the group was called Green Jello. But um, it said Green Jelly, and there's a little umlaut on the thing. I was like, oh. And uh, this video was being passed around in my middle school after the premiere on MTV of the Three Little Pigs video, which went, like, you would say it went viral back in the day, but it was on high, heavy, heavy rotation on MTV. And this video is a claymation video, and it changed the lives of many uh, children my age at that time. We were all watching MTV. Beavis and Butthead was a thing, I think. Beavis and Butthead started when I was in seventh or eighth grade. And, yeah, green fucking jello changed our life and i have green jello on this episode so green fucking jello so yeah this is this is an episode i want to say you know tw- at least 25 years in the making green jello changed my life in middle school and now i have green jello in the van i have bill and lazy d of green jello on this episode of podcast subcast episode 23 i believe we're on but yeah, I did a thing. I'm starting to do a thing where I'm writing again, and I have an email list. And you can, if you want to sign the email list, sign below. But pretty much what I'm doing is I'm offering everyone if they sign the email list, and I'm gonna put the little commercial in there. But I'm offering everyone uh, all of the music I've ever written and recorded professionally in my entire life. Allie's warming the apartment with the gas stove, which is gonna kill us. That's- Oh, she says she's not. She says she's cooking French fries, but really, what she's doing is she's warming the apartment with a gas stove, and we're gonna get carbon monoxide poisoning. And we're gonna die. But anyway, hey, hey, real quick shout out. If you want to sign the email list, I'm. I've been doing this thing where I started again. I back in the day, I used to write. And I used to write these stories, and I used to. I used to love writing. I I would write every week to everyone on the email list, and I'm doing it again. So if you sign up on the email list, the link is below. You get every single downtown brown song that's ever been professionally recorded in the last 20 years a and then b every week you get a nice little email from me where i'm gonna write about what not and i'm gonna read to you what i wrote everyone last week and people seem to enjoy it so right now it's story time and i'm gonna read the email that i sent to everyone on the email list so get your 
hearing ears ready for me to read a little sonnet, a little lullaby, a little writing that I wrote for you, um, which was explaining a day in my life and also explaining how this day pertained to the way I view things at large in general. So here we go. The title of this piece is I Had to Pull Over the Van Today by Neil Patterson. Let's go. I had to pull over the van today. It was an emergency. I had to pull over the van immediately or else something really terrible would have happened. My friend Jeff was in town and he bought us tickets to see Mr. Bungle. I can write a whole essay on what I thought of that concert. I might, I might not. I probably won't because, you know, I have some uh, uh, inflammatory opinions on the whole Mr. Bungle concert. Either way, we went to the concert. Today, this was like a week ago. Today, this, this was today. Not today. This was not today. This was the day I said today. Anyway, today, Jeff said that we needed to go to this fried chicken establishment called Raising Cane's, which apparently has really delicious fried chicken. We went. I consumed a meal that was 1,300 calories, which consisted of four chicken fingers, Texas toast, French fries, and a side of coleslaw. I ate the hell out of it. It was quite delicious. I dropped Jeff off at the airport and then hopped back on the 405 North towards Long Beach, and it hit me. I needed to pull over the van. Soon. Traffic kind of came to a halt, which was weird for a Saturday. I was thinking, I need to shit. I am going to get off at the next exit and find a bathroom. The tension began to grow as my stomach is not entirely used to consuming fried meat. My diet generally consists of plant-based food, oatmeal, protein, powder, legumes, sweet potatoes, etc. The fried chicken did not agree with me. I needed to shit. Quickly. I started to panic as I could feel that every... Even the slightest movement may very well cause my bowels to move in my shorts. As I exited the highway, I knew that I needed to find a gas station immediately or I was going to go in my pants. There was no gas station. I then decided that these were dire circumstances and I proceeded to pull over hastily into the parking lot of a furniture store. I threw the van in park, cranked the e-brake, jumped in the back of my van, dropped my shorts, and prayed to Lord baby Jesus that my anus was hovering above the center of the small plastic trash can that resides in my vehicle. I unleashed holy hell into the trash can, with precision, I might add. Not a drip. Come on, autofocus. Come on, you fucking stupid motherfucker. Why does it keep turning off? Why doesn't it just stay autofocused? Not a drip. I removed the trash bag that was in the small plastic can. I cleaned myself using wet wipes. I triple bagged the soiled trash bag with Kroger bags that I had accumulated on tour. I took a deep breath and sighed, for I had very, very narrowly escaped what could have been a horrendous accident. As I left the parking lot, Google had recognized that I visited this furniture store because Google recognizes that shit, and asked me, how was your visit to blank furniture store? I laughed. I should have responded, they had a great parking lot for me to poo in. <laughs> Anyways, this type of thing has happened to me a few times before, and it got me thinking. I can name a few times in my life where I had to, quote, pull over the van, unquote, metaphorically speaking. There have been some occasions where I literally was in a situation so dire, I felt I needed to act immediately or get covered in shit. A lot of these times, too, when I found myself in these predicaments, the circumstances were horrible for a while before I decided to pull the fuck over and do something about it. One example of this would be in 2016, when the parameters of my romantic relationship changed super drastically without regards to my feelings on the matter. I was in a monogamous relationship with my ex-partner for 3.5 years, and she decided that she wanted to date other people but keep me as her, quote, primary partner. It's called polyamory. Look it up. It's a thing. It works for some people. I'm not knocking it. It just isn't for me. I knew deep in the core of my being that I wanted to be with this one person and thought we would be together forever and all that jazz. I thought that I needed this person in my life. I have addiction issues to the point where I reluctantly decided to enter into this newly open period of a relationship just to keep her around, knowing fully well that I did not want an open relationship at all. Once again, I'm not knocking the idea of polyamory. I just didn't want it. I thought this person and I were going to get married and shit. 
So I did the thing I didn't want to do for a while. It was very painful. It was not for me. I even ended up getting involved with other people. I did it for the wrong reasons, to make her jealous. It worked. I hurt people who I became involved with. I was a terrible mess, lashing out through my actions at a person I thought I, quote, loved, but wanted to hurt. Everyone hurt. Everyone was being terrible, but I couldn't let go of this connection because I thought I needed it. It got worse and worse. My sanity and stress level were at the brink of collapse. I was on tour with my band, and one morning I received a phone call from my mom informing me that my father had gone brain dead in the hospital where he was fighting colon cancer. He had told me he didn't want to see me, which is another story altogether. He didn't want to see me. I was in Brooklyn, New York on tour when I got the news. I freaked the fuck out. I was so angry at the world, it had reached a fever pitch. It took my dad dying for me to pull the fucking van over and shit in the bucket that was my terribly painful relationship. I called my then partner the morning my father was pronounced dead, and I screamed into the phone, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. We're breaking up. Ah!" And I know it's a weird analogy, but the way that relationship ended legitimately feels similar to what happened to me on the highway today. I knew this thing had to be done, and I thought I could wait to do it. Suddenly, the situation became extremely dire, and I knew I had to do something immediately or get covered in shit. Yeah, so that's the way my brain works. I don't know. And so, yeah, that's what I wrote that day to the people on the email list. And that's the type of things I'm, I'm going to write. I'm going to write little sonnets about my life, little stories. And if you want to receive those type of things, the link is below. And, uh, and yeah, I put the shout out to the listeners of, of uh, my email list. And I said, hey, does anyone out there have a similar situation they'd like to share on the subcast? And I asked people to email us stories of situations where you felt you had to make an immediate life-altering decision. Respond to this email. And you can respond at any time. You don't have to respond to an email. You can just send me an email, subcastpod at gmail.com. If uh, you have any questions you want to ask, if you have any subject you want to discuss on the podcast, you know, if I dig the email, if I think it's worth talking about, I will read it. And um, I did. I got a bunch of responses to this email, which is funny because you wouldn't think that people that an email about shitting in a bucket would resonate and you wouldn't think that me comparing it to a a life event like having to end a relationship you you wouldn't think the connection would be there but apparently this kind of resonated with some humans so i got an email from our friend jeremy from san antonio texas and i'm going to pull up that email right now And, and he i asked him if i could read it on the podcast and he said Sure. So right now I'm going to read the email from Jeremy from San Antonio, Texas. Jeremy, what is up? Jeremy writes, hey, Neil. This is kind of a long. Jeremy writes, hey, Neil. This is Jeremy from San Antonio, Texas. You have slept on my couches. Anyways, I know the last time I saw you, things weren't going so good. And I've never really told anyone this story, but I want to share it with you. Sorry if it rambles on a little bit. In 2016, I pretty much hit a dark place in my life. My drinking and partying had me and my wife split. I moved out. I thought I was untouchable. Work had promised, pr- work had promoted me, and I would gotten moved to Livonia, Michigan for almost a year. At that time, you had just lost your father, and I had to reach out because I was lonely, but you declined to hang out. Well, I was in a fucked up place. So sorry, dude. Wish we could have hung. Which is very understandable at the time. I reached out to Ron and spent some time with him. I was a mess. I started a new relationship with a girl, and it wasn't so good. It was just bad from the get-go. The drugs and drinking were way out of control. I got sent back to San Antonio, Texas, to find out this girl had cheated on me and with one of my closest friends. So the house I had gotten to give her a place to live and start a new life just became my personal punching bag. Before she left, before she, left she broke my nose and said her friend had alerted her employer which he works alongside me. So dealing with a divorce from my wife and now this new person fucking my life up, I gave into drinking. I would just pop any kind of pills because I wanted to die. One night of so many nights, I would get fucked up and drive super fast around town just so I could crash and just end it. There was one time where I went in an overpass to jump off. This random couple talked me down and took me home. I had no idea this dude went through any of this. I was super pissed. I swallowed a whole bottle of Aleve and went to bed. I woke up cold and shaking, screaming for help. The last thing I did is remember saying, fuck this world, I'm done. Woke up in the hospital. My ex-wife, the good one, was by my side the whole time. My work had pretty much almost fired me, but since I carried a lot of the secret projects of my upcoming model changes, they couldn't risk letting me go. They sent me to rehab. I got there and I knocked out two months. I felt a little better. But my depression and anxiety were still very out of control. Very out of control. I remember talking to Ron 
when his wife left and I cried with him. I told myself, life is fucked up, but someone has it worse. The one thing that saved me, honestly, was playing music and being in a band again. I've got to do some amazing things with my band. At that time last year, I, I saw you and I was sober. I felt great. Last September, I relapsed at a show and then made a fool of myself. I was embarrassed. That's when I was rushed up to the hospital because I was throwing up blood to find out from all the crazy shit I put myself the last three years, my stomach was inflamed and had a stomach ulcer. I had to get it taken care of. That's when I told myself, dude, you need to fucking take care of yourself. This is it. I ran out of lives. I probably won't have a next time. I started writing more and going to therapy. It's helped. I got my wife and daughter back and that was my main goal. Now when I perform, I try not to drink. I'm offered a beer. I can control myself and just sip it. 2020, I wanted to completely give up drinking. It's been hard. Sorry for the long story. There's a lot more details I skipped. But when I heard Subcast and started listening to you, I found it more comforting than any stupid therapist who didn't know what I was going through. Everything you said, things you've gone through, it hit home to me. To hear from a friend, what you go through, to me, it's like, hey, Neil got up and survived. Ron got through his shit. I know I can do this. Honestly, Neil, this podcast has helped me. You give, you give me that it's okay and that everything will be okay. Even though we are miles apart, I feel you are by my side. You are my voice. Thanks for your words, your music. Take care, my friend. Hugs. Love you, bro. I love Ron. Take care, Jeremy. Wow, that's really fucking cool. So this is the type of dialogue I'd like to open up is to, to anyone that wants to talk to me. And we'll fucking put it on here for people to listen to. And that's just thinking about that story real quick because i just read that but i didn't have a chance to really l let it sink in but i man you really have no idea what other people are going through and when you're going through your shit a lot of people you know they could see your social media and see the type of person you are especially w with i mean we all heard the ron podcast the stuff that he was going through i mean he's such a like happy guy on social media it's hard to really tell when people are like really struggling and I that shit resonates with me getting in a car and driving recklessly and just not giving a fuck and just wanting it to end because I was there uh 2007 2008 before I quit drinking I, I was getting behind the wheel of uh, work vehicles I was getting behind the wheel of my mom's car I was getting behind the wheel of my car and I was super fucking shit-faced and uh yeah I, I dude I totally understand that that like being so fucked up and everything be being seemingly so bad that you just don't care anymore and um, I just think that's super rad that you were able to pull yourself out of it and get your life back and get your kids back and get your fucking wife back. So like props to you, Jeremy. And, and if, and if dudes like Ron or myself could provide you with any sort of inspiration to get your life together, then that, that's like super, I'm like getting choked up thinking about it. So I don't know what to say, dude. Um, I'm really glad that uh the homies ron and i could inspire you in even the slightest dude and uh yeah next time if you're around california like i'm down to hang i'm also kind of a weird introvert at this point in my life like people hit me up and they want to talk a lot and people hit me up and i pretty much just hang out with my girlfriend uh i have some friends i don't know but um but thanks for sharing that story jeremy i'm, I'm really glad you got your shit together and, and you're a stronger man than i because i can't sip on a beer if i have a beer i will have 10 um so I had to stop drinking completely because I just know that that if I have one beer, that will flip a switch in my brain and I'll be like fucking balls deep in a fifth and blacking out and tackling homeless people and just being a bad person. So um, so if you can just play a show and have a beer, then props to you. If you could just sip it, that that's some self-control right there. I can't do that shit. So, so Jeremy from San Antonio, Texas, props to you. Thanks for writing. And if anyone else has anything else they want to say, subcast pod at gmail.com and so that's what we're doing we're trying to form a kind of a community here uh i send out emails i'm going to tell you stories about me you can reply back you can send me an email out of fucking nowhere and let's let's open this shit up let's not have it just be about me and my life let's have it be about other people sharing their stories and let's have, make a community out of this man i don't i don't want to just be a guy on, on a microphone being super you know i am self-obsessed i do talk about myself a lot i uh I'm fucking super anxious and I, you know, I'm super into what's going on in my brain because that's my immediate focus is like what's going on right in front of me. But, but yeah, I would like to open this up and have it be like, what's going on with you motherfuckers? Tell me, let's talk. 
So shouts out to Jeremy, shouts out to Ron and anyone else that's going through some shit and that is finding the strength to keep going and somehow get through it. Because I tell you, there's days where I don't give a fuck about getting out of bed. I just think I'm just like over it. I'm over all of it. But then, you know, there are days where I get up out of bed and I fucking write 14 paragraphs about shitting in a bucket and it makes me feel better. So there you have it. Sign up for the email list. It's down. The link is down below. Send us an email, subcastpod at gmail.com. We got the Patreon as always. The Patreon is uh, it's fucking lit right now. People are supporting the show and they're supporting me and they're making things easier because I'm still a broke piece of shit. And um, we got green fucking jello. So that's the intro to Subcast 23. And we're going to get on with the interview in just a moment here. But um, But yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good because... People are listening and people are responding and we, we're creating a dialogue here. We're just a bunch of humans and we're trying and, you know, we're, I, we're just trying. And that's all you can do is keep trying. And then one day we're not going to be here and maybe who knows. By the time we're gone, we'll have left something behind uh, or not. Either way, let's keep trying because what the fuck else are we going to do? Not try, you know? So anyway, without further ado, Subcast 23, Green Jello, super jazz on this interview. We are waiting, and we are in Hollywood, California. We are waiting for Mr. Bill Manspeaker and my friend Lazy D, who is now a member of Green Jello. And we are waiting in the van for them to actually walk around the block because apparently Bill Manspeaker from Green Jello is trying to avoid his landlord who lives around here. So they're taking the long way walking towards the van to get in the van to do the interview. And I've been trying to, I've been trying to lock this guy down for a minute now. All good. Lazy D says all good. And um, yeah, my friend Lazy D from the Midwest, from Ohio, is now that he's in Green Jello and just did a tour with Green Jello and, and Insane Clown Posse of all groups. I think I was able to land this interview thanks to Lazy D. So Lazy D will be walking through the door of this van in any moment. And we're just, we're rolling. We're already rolling. What day of the week is it? Allie? Um, you can talk. You know you can talk. Wednesday. You can, you, you're not like Jamie from the Joe Rogan experience where if you talk, I'm going to shoot you a death look. Like you, you can, <laughs> one, of, one of these days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a camera pointing at you too. Yeah. And then you're going to get a mic, so, it, like, nice. yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll try to make this work better in the future. I'm, yeah, I'm very mysterious behind this camera, you know? But not in the last episode. Did you watch it, or did you just skim it? Um, I haven't watched it yet. Okay. <laughs> because you're actually in it. Nice. Yeah. You're in the, the intro, right? Mm-hmm. You did an intro? Yeah, and I, said I w and I said I wasn't going to keep it, but I totally kept it. Oh, you did? Cool. Yeah. Good. Now that I know I'm in it, I don't know. Sometimes it's nice being behind the camera, but yeah, it'd be nice to just be like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, here. Here, take this. Oh. Well, all right. Say something. Something. Do, do you have the headphones on? I don't. Okay. Well, yeah. start. But yeah. I'm sure that it's getting me. No, I'm looking at you. Cool. You, you're there are sound levels. Cool. I'll just do this. Allie, are you excited? For what? Because we're moving out of the living room. I am so excited, <laughs> and you know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm very excited. Um, now that you moved everything out of your van to do the podcast today by yourself, thank you. We have to move it all back um, in the van tomorrow. But it made me just see like how much. I've accumulated over the past couple of days and I was kind of like, maybe I am being like too excited and getting too many things because there's a big pile in the living room. Yeah. And we only have 750 square feet. I know. So. But just seeing it like all together, I was kind of like, oh shit. Yeah. And there's even more. <laughs> there's a giant futon. There's tons of boxes. I have, I, yeah. I know. So. I'm being a little bit of a psycho, but I'm really excited. I understand. You know? I understand you want like to have stuff in the new place, but I, I'm pretty sure after we put all the stuff that we have in there, it, the new place is going to be pretty fucking cram packed full of shit. Well, it's going to be nice because I'm already thinking like, should I keep swiveling this back yeah. towards my face? <laughs> my own camera person. Yeah. I keep thinking like, Selfie oh, cam. when you like go out of town or like go on tour, like in the next month or so, 
I'm going to be like all alone there. And I haven't even been there yet, but I'm already like fearing like, oh, I'm going to be like in, I've never like really been in a space like alone, alone, you know, like no animals, no people. You'll be okay. You're going to be alone. Well, yeah, but you know? there's a lot of people that live around there. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. people are coming. All yeah. Right. My interview is over. Here you go. No. Yeah. Here, take that. I hear, I hear a lazy D. <laughs> Come on in. Can you, can you try unlocking it? They yeah, might be trying to. It, 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 it does lock. Hey, what up? What's going on? Hey, hand me that mic. Hey. Come on in. <laughs> come get, come yeah. get molested in this van with me, Bill. Here. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Hey. I'm Neil. All right, man. Who's got the meth? <laughs> yeah, I got all the meth. We got all the drugs. All six that. times six is 36. So we got Lazy D. <laughs> We're already rolling. We just oh. we, we kind of started the podcast just waiting. Oh yeah. So looking for some man. <laughs> so we got we got eight and eight to sixteen. We got one mic here, which means it like whoever's talking, it should be somewhat close to. Right. So we're gonna get just pass it around. That's he's the three point one four one six pi. It is pi. I'm P-I. looking for some math. Mm, I'm looking for some math. <laughs> I get it. So. I had to wake Bill up. So, so I'm in a van <laughs> on a street. <laughs> yep. In Cracktown, Hollywood. <laughs> yep. With the three strangers <laughs> that I met on the internet. Is that what's going on? <laughs> that it pretty much is what's going <laughs> on. My pants are still on, so. <laughs> so far, so, so good. far, so far, so good. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah. I mean, the the internet brings people together, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah! The other day, I, I met this guy that was really into ponies, and um, he, he like came over with his pony collection, and, and the next thing I know, he had this thing up his butt, and, and, and it had a tail, and he was hopping around my house. And I was like, "Whoa, dude!" I thought we were like gonna play My Little Ponies. So it's like a pony butt plug thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, nice. I guess he had a pony fetish. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's, I didn't know. Yeah, it, the internet. Yeah, the internet. I think we're going to play with My Little Ponies, and all of a sudden he brought his own little pony for me to play. Yeah. Well, and I, and I, and I, didn't, want it to, I didn't want to touch Sparkles. He was the pony. And I know of the pony fetish because of the internet. Right, exactly. Yeah. See? But, but I learned about Green Jello from a VHS tape. Oh. I was, a, I was in middle school, and the serial killer VHS tape, I, I acquired it from the guy named Nick that went. Uh, I did went, you steal it? No, he just l- he lent it to me. Oh, great! And he was like the heavy metal kid. Were you having trouble with your parents? Oh, uh, with one of them, yeah. And so you just borrowed the tape just to annoy them, right? Well, I borrowed the tape because and then you just played it, and then they're just like, "Oh, we're sorry, man. Whatever no. it is, we'll get back together. No. Mommy and Daddy love each other. Just take the tape out." No, that never happened. I watched it in secret. You know? Really? Yeah, because they were working, you know. And I you watched I, it in secret. Yeah, oh. when when the parents weren't around because it had naughty lyrics. It did and, have naughty things. Yeah, on and, it. and there was uh, poop poo. Yeah, there was a giant poop, poop, poop man. There was a word poop poo. Yeah, that. Lo- oh, they, this should change my life though, Bill. Like I know you and I just I, met. I, I made that video at three. Three o'clock in the morning, and, and we bought a hundred pounds of dog food, <laughs> and we poured it into this giant friggin' aquarium that we made on the second floor. And now that I think about it, nobody really did the math to see if the weight would, you know, like the water weight would fall through the, the, you know, the floor. But um, it was probably like eighty degrees in um, in the morning. Um, we, we didn't have any plan how to empty it. So after we had shot the video, we're like, oh. All right, we got buckets out the window. Two thousand gallons of dog food in our house right now, <laughs> and it's ninety degrees. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, we try to siphon it out. Oh, it geez. didn't really work. <laughs> 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 but anyways, uh, so you were watching the video in secret. Yeah, were you were you naked? I was uh, I was uh, did you have peanut butter on your titties? I had titties. In fact, you know what's weird? Oh, oh, oh shit! Wait, wait, I'm doing the math. No, no, no! But I'm taking this all back. But but what's weird? What's weird? <laughs> just to be totally and candid, I, I'm gonna run for president in the year 2030, Mr. Man Speaker. Back in 2020, when I was in middle school, the kids called me Breast Boy because Breast Boy. I, yeah, because really? I had breasts. No. I was you know I, I was fat. 
You know? Oh, I've so always, so you might have had peanut butter on your titties then. Possibly. Right, right. I don't think okay, I did. Right, right, but right, but, right, but all, we're touching sacred ground, but I get it. But we are in a van. But old breast boy, little little breast boy in Hollywood, in the back it, alley. We are in Hollywood. <laughs> we're, we're talking with about middle school me yes. with the bright light. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. I'm not liking this. It is. All right, all right, all right. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> but, but yeah, I. I never saw anything as vile and creative and, and rock and roll and wonderful as the serial killer VHS when I was in middle school. With little breast boy. It changed well, thank forever. You. Well, we just made it right down the street, literally. Yeah. Right so, down Hollywood Boulevard. So where was, where was the second floor where the shit man was filmed? Uh, just right down in uh, Hollywood and Walton. Okay. Uh, right next to uh, T- uh, Tai Rung Restaurant. And what year was that? Was that? Uh, that was 1992. Okay. You remember that, right? <laughs> I was 12. Yeah, we're about the same age then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying I'm hanging out in a van with two 12-year-olds. This my, yes. This is my adopted dad. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, I got to go. <laughs> that, that shit was epic, though, because when I was that age, I, uh, in sixth grade, we had like a book assignment I had we had to do. Yeah. And I uh, illustrated and did the words, all the lyrics from the Three Little Pigs song and illustrated the whole thing off the video. Yeah. Like when I was 12. That's why we're friends. Yeah. And I then felt so, an obligation. So he yeah. is at my house sleeping one day and uh, I'm outside cutting the grass and all of a sudden I come out and Bill's like taking pictures of me. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Take my headphones out. I'm like, what are you doing? So I got uh, pictures of my rock star friend cutting his grass. And I guess my wife had showed him the book. Yeah. That I had made. made. I didn't even know I. Oh, because you still have it. I yeah. didn't even know yeah. I had it. She I found it. And That's went, awesome. And went in after and that. And then there, there he was. Yeah. He was mowing his lawn. And now he can't get rid of me. No. What city? <laughs> where do you? Where are you living now, Lazy D? Because you and I have known each other for years and years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I'm cur- wow. yeah, when I'm currently not wow. sleeping on his floor. <laughs> yeah. He's living in a castle right yeah, now. Yeah, I still. In I'm still in space out of Cincy. Okay, so that was in Cincinnati, and you were on tour with. You live in Cincinnati. You live in Kentucky. On the border of Cincinnati. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right Kentucky. across the river. You yeah. do not live in Cincinnati. I another fun another fun fact. That's the like first me time I live in Beverly Hills when I live <laughs> in the fucking bad side of Hollywood, right? Yes. I live in Beverly Hills. I'm in the Beverly Hills. When I first met Bill, it, wa- it was area, in a truck stop. In the area of Beverly Hills. You're in all of a truck stop in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Well, I did. I, I, I was <laughs> peeing. Uh, it's a true story. I was peeing in a truck stop, and this guy was standing next to me, and he was he took a look. And I was like, <laughs> dude, what's up with that? And See. he... Guilty. He kind of rubbed his foot against mine. I was just like, like I'm doing right "You got to test the water." Just, exactly. Like yeah. that, I'm, 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 I'm completely serious. And then I, I walk out of the chair and he, and he starts following me, and, <laughs> and he says, "I'll suck your dick for a cheeseburger." And, and I was just it was like, two cheeseburgers or a double cheeseburger. It was a double cheeseburger. And uh, next thing you know, he was in the band. Yep. And he can't get rid of me now. And that was two years ago. Yeah. So Lazy D, what's your role in Green Jello? Uh, we're still well, trying. To, we're still trying to figure that one out. Again, again, he's just been following me. I'm not kidding. Yeah, from the truck stop. Yeah, uh, it's, like it's like a little puppy. Well, you are. Uh, you're, you're certainly you're aware of my drunken antics bit, then, by now. And then, and then what, it follows you, and then it poops in your van. How, well, how long have you been doing Lazy Ass Destroyer, which is your rap project? Yeah. Um. Probably about ten years or so. It's been that long. Yeah. When did? When, <laughs> it's been that long. Uh, no, it's crazy. No, because the passage of time. When did? When did you and I meet? Do you remember? I don't even remember where we met at originally. Uh, huh. I don't know, but I know our paths cross all the time. Yeah. You were just. I. What I remember I about you guys met in the Cincinnati area. Possibly somewhere in Ohio. Possibly. What I remember about Lazy D is I, I don't remember meeting Lazy D, but I remember his sticker was on my keyboard. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> but 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 check this out. It wasn't on. My keyboard case, it was on my fucking actual <laughs> keyboard. I don't remember meeting him either. And all I remember is his hand touching my ass. <laughs> yep. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Yep. But I was. And he's like, I want to go on the road with you. And I was like, I don't I really want to go to Walmart men, with I don't you. Men at, 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 at truck stop gas stations. And he got, he literally got into the van. Yep. 
Did this, story. this actually happen? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. And he got into the van. And I was like, and I was like, anybody know this dude? <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm going with you. And yeah. we closed the door and we, we drove. Jesus, the I'm wrong with like, you. What, two and a half years ago? Yeah, almost three years. And I mean, I don't, I don't pick up men in gas stations. Yeah. But you did that night. I just I, said, I, I, uh, you know. It happened. Yeah. I was looking for math. But I always, I always thought that that was <laughs> fucking... This guy's ballsy because who? He is ballsy. Speaking of, was one, no pun no, intended. He is, he is, but who? Know. Who? Like, it's one thing you to fucking tag someone's like amp case right. or tag their fucking guitar, but tag their actual instrument. Yeah, like, like how did, bro, how did that sticker get out there? The van from a bathroom. <laughs> Was it probably one of those he Lazy D.O.'s V5 buck stickers, wasn't it? It was the blue and white one. Oh, shit. That's an old oh, one. Maybe. That's the an old one. Sticker story, I'm sorry. He, 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 <laughs> it, from the toilet to the van. Yep. And he adopted me, and we've been pals ever since. He took and now he's in my house. <laughs> making me walk around like 10 blocks. He's like, oh, yeah, my friend's over here. I'm like, where? Oh, yeah, I'm on the street over here. Past these three meth heads, <laughs> right around the street from the crack whore. Parking's hard around here. So there's a kind of rough neighborhood around here. I, I used to live. Well, in... um, they used to house all the mentally ill like uh, block over there, and then mm -hmm. they tore down their uh, their housing and built these expensive lofts. Mm -hmm. And now they're literally just roaming the streets. <laughs> right, like they zombies. got nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, literally. You know the Fishbone guys, right? Of course. Yeah, Norwood. Uh, has managed my band. I'm in this weird funk thing. I, I know. Downtown and, Brown. Yeah, yeah, that's us. Um, you were we, supposed to be in Green Jello once. At one, yeah, yeah, you remember. Yes, of course. Yeah. And we're on uh, a Cycle Six tour. We were supposed to do it, and you guys were going to play the, uh, uh, in Green Jello. It was going to be o over in England. Ah, the England tour, yeah, yes, yes. The ill fated England tour. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've toured with Cycle Six like seven or eight times. Those are our good friends. Yeah, and, yeah I love that so. band. So Matty J said, uh, just jumping top of him, he said his antlers, like you taught him how to construct yeah, those. Yeah, I did. I, I, I made him his moose antlers one day. Yeah. And uh, everybody was calling him Matty Moose, but he had no moose heads, you know? And so I just made him some out of foam and brought it to him on the show. It was uh, actually in Rochester, uh, April uh, 9th, uh, 2010. And that was on the tour of Nashville Pussy, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. So that's that's where the Maddie... Montage in Rochester. That was where Matty J. Moose started. And you remember, so do you have a photographic memory? You yeah, remember? yeah, yeah. I can, I can remember anything. Since he does. He remembers, like, the oddest, weirdest fucking dates. It blows my mind all the time. So as far as, like, the, 19, the 1992, you making the serial killer, do you, you know... You know oh, I can, yeah, vividly, yeah. You know just exact dates was, and times? As if we just walked away from it right now and took a break and sat in your van and talked. <laughs> yep. does, does it like seem... Like we're in some sort of time machine across an uh, intergalactic uh, portal. Does it seem like yesterday? Or does it... Because she and I were just talking about this rolling up here that, like, time seems f so fleeting. It goes by so quickly. Super quick. Do, like what? It's all one long day, to me. Is that how it legitimately yeah, seems? Yeah, yeah, seriously. Since the moment that I pulled in here, and uh, that was August fourteenth, nineteen eighty-eight, at uh, the corner of Gower and, um, or no, a uh, corner of Bronson and Sunset. Where did you pull in from? Uh, I drove all the way from Buffalo, New York. Okay, so you're all oh, Buffalo, New York, ah. yeah. The, the very snowy town of Buffalo. Yep, I got off at the sunset exit and uh, looped around and pulled into the gas station. Called up my friend, said, where are you, dudes? They're like, we're down at Tower Records, man, come down. What did you have with you, just a car? Like, just a car and a girl and some underwear. <laughs> so n n no instruments, no like no nothing. I I drove three thousand miles across the United States to be on um a TV show called the Gong Show. Ah, okay, I know the Gong Show. Yeah, they I, I was reading the paper in, in Buffalo looking for a job because I didn't want to be a bum. I said I gotta get I gotta do something with my life, and I'm looking through the paper and it said auditions for the Gong Show. I was like, oh my god, this is it. So I called them up and I said I have this crappy band, Green Jello. People throw food at me. Were you doing it? In bu were you doing it in Buffalo? Oh yeah, yeah. I okay. had started by band in uh, high school, 1981. I was uh, 17 years old, January uh, 19th, uh, 1981. So you knew people out here they, they were going to be your band, kind of like you just came out and you did the satellite thing. Oh, um, like, I knew a couple people that yeah. were here, 
and um, they moved to Hollywood to become a star. And um, I just hopped in the car to be on the game show, and I drove all the way over here. And on my way here, my car blew up in uh, the Rocky Mountains, and I was like, "Fuck my life!" I drove two thousand five hundred fucking miles. I'm at the top of the goddamn mountain, and then the car blows up. And then I realized I'm on the top of the mountain, right? Right. All I got to do is glide all the way down. <laughs> so I put it all the way down that mountain to Los Angeles, and I pulled up at Debbie Reynolds' studio on Lancashire Boulevard at 4 o'clock on Wednesday with my rock and roll pumpkin head on. And I said, rock and roll pumpkin, say it again. That's amazing. And they put me on the show. So did, did then you they make immediately it? gonged him? Yeah, they immediately gonged me. <laughs> but you made it on the show. Oh yeah, yeah. My uh, my goal was to have proof that I did in fact own the world's worst band, and I could only <laughs> prove that by being gonged on national television years and years before my success. Yep. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You so, can find it on YouTube. Okay, so that's actually on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's all the that's all the proof you needed. That's it. So so ten years later. In, in 1997, when somebody said, I got the worst band in the world. I said, oh, no, you don't. Yeah. I got a tape from the Gong Show in 1987. Proves you wrong. So what happened after the Gong Show appearance? Well, uh, the car was blown up, so I couldn't go back home. And uh, that was a predicament. Tends to be. So, uh, I lived underneath my friend's uh, dining room table. I went and bought a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to move out of the living room. So, yeah. so then you know. Yeah, yeah we know. You know, we know how, how it is. This is. Yep. I went and bought a queen-size sheet, and I put it over the dining room table, and I moved in. <laughs> <laughs> and they got me a job at Tower Records. And while I was at Tower Records, I'd tell my crazy story about how I'd dress up as a cow or a rock and roll pumpkin and people throw food at me, say that I sucked, and I drove in my car and it blew up, and I got on the gong show, and then they gonged me, and I was humiliated in front of millions of people. And they all just thought I was insane. Yeah. <laughs> All my co-workers, because they're they all moved there to, to become the uh, next Motley Crew. All poofy hair, metal band glam, everything was crazy at the Sunset Strip. And I, and I, and, I, and I'm talking about my cows, my cows and my <laughs> pumpkins and my pigs. So, so they pretty much saw as a whack job. And, and I, I mean, they were right. And, and 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 years later. One of those people I told that story to at the record store, he, he got a job at a record company. And he said, Bill, come come down to the food court at Sunset and Vine today. Uh, we're all having lunch out, out there. I'll introduce you to the president of the record company. I said, oh, fuck, sure. What record company was it? Zoo Entertainment on BMG. Okay, okay and that, that's the label they put out the serial code. Yes. Okay. So uh, I stumbled down there. Pretend that I was walking by. I said, oh, my God, Kevin Coogan, how are you? I haven't seen you since I talked to you on the phone 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and I gave him a big hug, and he introduced me to Lou Molly, who was the president. He said, ah, and he's at the table eating, ah. <laughs> Kevin tells me he got a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is the typical, you know. Let, you tell me about your band. Yeah, I right. fucking am eating my food, motherfucker. <laughs> tell me about your band, you fucking asshole. <laughs> and so I have proceeded my story of, you know, I had the worst band. I got in my car and I got on the gong show and people threw food at me and they yelled that I sucked and I dressed up as a cow. And he was amazed. <laughs> He just stopped eating. He looked at me and shit in his beard. He was just like, how much do you need to do this? <laughs> and I just fucking threw out this random number off the top of my head. I said, ah, 60,000 bucks. And I only said this because my cousin was selling her house back in Buffalo for that price. And I was just talking to my mom Sunday night about it. It was like 60 grand. He fucking flips open his wallet. was like... Right, man, speaker, a check for 60 grand. We just signed Green Jello. 
So I got a record contract. I not even record contract. I got a video contract without the record company hearing my band, seeing my band. That's unreal. And no having any sort of information except for what I just spewed out in three seconds. So the the pitch sold it. And instantly. Was it even? And a- I walked away with sixty fucking thousand dollars. I'm working seven dollar an hour job. <laughs> Jeez. Bringing home two hundred and forty dollars a week. Yeah. That's incredible. Thousand dollars a month. And suddenly I got fucking sixty months in advance paid in my fucking hand. And I show my roommate, I said, dude, look at this fucking jacket. He's like, oh, shit. So I'm going to fucking start a band, man. Adam, let's fucking start a band. <laughs> and Adam goes, all right, Maynard, let's start a band. Oh. And what are we going to call? We'll call it Tool. And I said, all right, I'll throw a party Friday night. You guys can play the party, and you'll get signed, too. You said Adam and Maynard. Yes. So, those so are- they threw together this band real fast. I don't mind. I go cash my sixty thousand dollar check or fucking piles of money. We're like, Woo, money, money! We buy all this beer. Tell our friends to come over, and the record company shows up, and and then they go back to work on Monday. And said, uh, Bill, Bill's roommate has a great band. You should sign them. <laughs> So all of a sudden, within a, a, a fucking a few weeks' time, yeah, there's this house that, that was making minimum fucking wage, uh, eating ramen noodles, scraping fucking pennies together to go buy some fucking day-old bread. And, and now we got $360,000. Wow. So what do we do? We set the fucking house on fire. For real? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, we kick out the neighbors and we take over their spot and then we take all their stuff and we smash it and we throw it in a big pile and then we set it on fire. And then the police came over, so we had to piss on it to put it out and 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 and, and, and then they left. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, because I knew the I, I knew the tool And now they all own a giant mansions. That's crazy. Because yeah. I, I knew the tool correlation, but I didn't know you were those were your roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just all living together. And doing nothing. Well, not nothing, but, you know, living in Hollywood. Yeah, it's struggling. Uh, pursuing getting our, by. Getting pursuing by. our dreams and ambitions yeah. and hopes and trying to live to our full potential every day. That's amazing. And and so because of they, the record company came to the party. Yes. And saw Tool play. Oh, yes. And and that was what got Tool on. Oh, yeah. First time they play. That was the, the first, their first gig they got their signed. Their first gig they got signed. <laughs> Now, now was, and I didn't even have a gig, and I got signed. That's fucking amazing. I was the right guy at the right time. You know, a, a person that was a visionary that uh, believed in you know, our, our ideas. Now, did you already have the concept for all the videos and all the songs? Oh, hell no. I was lying through my fucking teeth. <laughs> I told him I knew how to make videos, and I worked at a television station. Yeah, I fucking worked at a television station. I got fucking coffee, all right? <laughs> but, you know, they, 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 you don't say that at the fucking meeting. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, man, I know how to edit and do all kinds of production stuff. Oh, yeah. I can make these videos real cheap. But you said you had pigs and cows. And oh, yeah, yeah, I had so all had- these Songs, so you, crappy songs. So, yeah. so you had the songs already, but you didn't have the concepts for all the videos and whatnot. No, no, no. I just literally made that up. Okay. As I was shooting it. Okay. Just roll. Put the fucking cow head on and go. So what would you... Lights, camera, action. What was the first day on set of the first video? What, uh, the first video I did was uh, a Serial Killer. And it took, and, and I thought to myself, I'm just going to work full time at my job at uh, E Entertainment Television, getting people coffee. And um, I'm going to work that full time. And then on the weekends, I can make these videos. Well, after two fucking months of making this goddamn video and it's fucking half ass, and I put it all together and I show it to the record company, and not one laugh, not one fucking clap, not a fucking sniff, nothing. And I just said, my next one will be better. And I had 11 to make, and that was only one. And so uh, my boss, great guy that he was, says, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to keep paying you. And you don't have to come to work. And you can come in at nighttime and put together all your videos and edit them here. And everybody will think you still work here because you're, they see you all the time. And until that happens, who cares? Holy and so shit. literally, he gave me free run of year in Tame Television, all the equipment I needed to use. I was there all the time. I got a paycheck. Everybody thought I worked there. Did you say E Entertainment? E Entertainment. Okay. Oh, so you shot the whole video. Agent. I shot all the videos just down the street on Hollywood Boulevard, but I edited them, put the special effects at E Entertainment Television. Did you use like Avid to do that? Oh no, this is when it was uh, tapes, like tape to tape, tape to tape. Wow. Tape to tape. <laughs> so the first video was two cans, son of Sam. Yes, yeah, so it was the very first one, and then I progressively failed at each one all the way until I had ten. And still, not a laugh, not an applaud, not a giggle, not a you did a good job. I had 10 fucking failures. Nobody liked it at all. I was done. So what and happened? I had one more. Ah, here we go. I had one more. And I, and I went to work and I said, I have this idea. An, an animated Pig video for three little pigs. Do you know anyone with a camera that goes one frame at a time? And my camera guy said, oh, yeah, uh, the kid next door to me has one. I'll introduce you to him. Said, oh, great. Next day, I go over to his house, his parents' house, because he's in high school. <laughs> and he's got a camera that shoots one frame at a time. Yeah. I said, hey, I got this storyboard about some pigs. And I'll give you two thousand dollars that you can buy a bunch of clay. Can you put this all together? It's like two thousand dollars. Woo! How so? How old was this kid? Uh, 16, 17. Okay, and so he he was in twelfth grade in high school. Okay, and he's the one that did the three little pigs video. He did the entire video. Of it. The entire video. Twelfth in grade in his dad's garage. It's <laughs> amazing that, that, that he made his dad pull the the car out of the garage. For two consecutive weekends. And for two grand. And him and his high school friends. That's amazing. Made little clay friggin' guys. And Rambo. And um, I said, you know what? I need the footage now. And he goes, well, we only got a minute and a half of it. I said, well, the, the, the video six and a half minutes. But I know we only have a minute. I'm like, we need five more minutes. You don't, you don't have the other five. No, no, we don't have it. I was like, oh, I can't even. And the red comes in. Ah, man, speak of this. this. is it. This is it. I was like, oh, fuck. So I just grabbed all the minute and a half footage we had, and we just stretched it to six and a half minutes. And if you watch that video, it shit repeats over and over. There is only a minute and a half of actual footage, and it's six and a half minutes long. It just repeats over and over again. And you patch it all together, and I... Last ditch effort. I said, "This is it. Here we go. Are you ready for this one?" And they're like, yeah. and "I put it in. And I press play, and they're like, ah, that's it. We're gonna sell a million." And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so they knew it right there. One the second they saw it, they they knew it was gonna sell millions of copies. So, did you think like if if you didn't give him that last ditch effort that if, if I would have given up like a fucking sissy that nothing would have happened? Yeah, no, but not just that. Well, but I mean, I just tried. You know, you just, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the eleventh time, I got it. Yeah, and so they they decided to put out the whole thing as a video. But oh yeah, they they thought it was uh, good enough. You know, now now it works. Did it? Did it just come, like just like a single? You know, did it come? Uh, all in, you need is one good song to sell the other ten crappy songs. Right, exactly. People buy the album, so they figured, well, they, we got one good video. You know, and now we could sell them an hour long video for twenty bucks instead of a five minute video for ten. Did the did the CD come? Was it decided to do it both, like the album? No, but it was literally just the video first. Okay, and then uh, Why did they then do a video and not a CD. Why was that the case? Because, because uh, the music was worthless. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there's really no point to listen enough, to it. it. It would be like it would be like watching. It would be like listening to to episodes of uh, Three's Company. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I 
you watch the show to, to look at Chrissy's boobs, right? <laughs> it's true. Yes. You, don't, you don't listen to her boobs, right? <laughs> the subtitles, I'm, right? Right, right. <laughs> boom, ba, boom, boom. No. <laughs> Doesn't work. So uh, they put out the video, and the video sold so well that people started asking for the CD. And then um, they said, Matt Speaker, do you mind if we put out the CD? I was like, well, you know, it kind of sucks. We'll give you a whole bunch of money. <laughs> Let's <laughs> start pressing those buttons. Let's do this right now. And so um, they pressed a bunch of CDs, and um, uh, got a five five months later, I got a check for uh, two million dollars. No way. Yep, on my birthday. So May first. So they re they released three little pigs as a single, uh, and then on March seventeenth, and then just put out the video, yes. the VHS tape. Yep. Okay, and and the demand was so high that they how how quickly did they need to turn around the CDs? Was that was that like a we got to do this now type of thing? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, it's popular now. You, you, you sell it now. How long was it running on MTV? Uh, probably like six months. It was number one. It was number one, yes. like consecutive Num number one requested video. And what year was that? Nineteen ninety three. So that was a year after your pitch meeting. Two. It was two years. Two years. Okay. And a year after I had handed it in. So I handed it in, in uh, you know, like June 1992, and nobody cared. And then June 1993, I got $2 million. Wow. And you changed it, you know, you, sh you showed a lot of young little guys with tits a warped world. Yeah, that that's they... what it was all about, it was, uh, it was to uh, inspire you as a kid. To show you that uh, making music was easy and uh, to, if you had a silly idea that you can go for it and that making videos were easy too. I, I made videos so, so that when you watched them, you could say to yourself, oh, I can do that. Yeah, cause and, had a, and people did. It had and a very DIY listened. aesthetic yeah, yeah. to and it. And it was supposed to be that way. It was supposed to be so that you listen to the music, that it was so simple that uh, a 10-year-old uh, kid could go, oh, I could play that song. Yeah, even the and then all of a sudden he's playing the song. And now that 10-year-old kid is 40 and he's in my band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, and, and, that's, and there, there he is. And I'm another one of them. I'm sitting there right, right next to Lazy D here. Yep. Well, and that's... And, and, and so flash forward to now, you're doing, the fr <laughs> you're doing the franchise thing. Right. So right now what I do is I go and I recruit that 10-year-old kid. Uh, everywhere in the world, all across the United States, all across Mexico, Canada, England, Europe, the Bahamas, Alaska. And I recruit that 10-year-old kid who's now a musician or an artist, and I put him in Green Jello. How many m total members? I have 889 people in my band currently right now. And that's the other thing I noticed, too, is is most... Like, I know a lot of musicians around the country and whatnot, but a lot of these people... A lot of these humans, they're like, I'm in green jello. Oh, yeah. And you're, they're, they're not like, they are. they're like, it's a big extended network family. Oh, yeah. Artists and musicians yeah. all around the world. And, and that's, and, a, and they're all uh, welcome 100% to, to sell, manufacture, and distribute their own green jello merch. Uh, I don't ask for any cut. I just, uh, they get it 100% because they're in the band. It's amazing. And it's their way to generate money so they can buy a ticket to uh, play at Sweden Rock Fest with Kiss. Yeah. Like we did last year. That was funny. Oh, you were there, Lazy D? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Slayer, Sweden. Kiss, ZZ oh, Top, like Sweden. Yeah, we did, uh, <laughs> we did that Fuck It song at Sweden Rock Fest. Yep. And it was fucking amazing. People were like, this is the craziest shit ever. So what happens when all of the band members show up at the same gig? They all get oh, on stage. Sick. We've had like three drum sets set up at one time. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. at the whiskey, we had uh, nine guitar players. <laughs> yes. Sound guy's nightmare. <laughs> no, fuck those sound guys. <laughs> and sound guy, you're a pussy motherfucker. Always come, I got to turn the dial. Put that in the cord. Yeah. It's tough. So it's, a, it's a tough life. So nine guitar players. Because, yeah, I was talking to Matty J. He said he uh, came up for the the uh, Hall of Wicked. No, yeah. yeah. That was yeah. Fun. We're at tour of the uh, Insane Clown Posse. He said there was, was amazing. Yeah, and I'm from Detroit. So, like, let's talk about that a little bit. How did how did that whole tour come? Yeah. <laughs> You've I done mean, a few things. You so, so, I'm, I'm, I mean, so, I'm, so I'm in a parking lot. 
yeah. <laughs> I'm in a parking lot. It's snowing. And some heavy setted bearded guy starts talking to me about his clown band that he has. <laughs> what year is this? This was three years ago. Okay. And I'm freezing my ass off listening to him nodding in my head. And he tells me that he would, he'd like to have our, our band play with his clown band at his clown festival and that his <laughs> brother is going to call me. <laughs> and I was like, great, great, let's do this. I go and I do my show. I call up his brother on Monday. I said, hi, I talked to Jay. He said I could play your clown party in the woods. <laughs> And this guy's like, well, man, I'm blah, 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 and uh, it's not that simple and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I, I don't know, man. So he said that I could play the clown party. Well, I'm going to have to approve this. And then also it turned into sort of, sort of like large debate. And I said, I don't really see what, what's going on. And he goes, well, here, kid, check this out. Uh, WW Gathering of the Juggalos. And, check. And, I, and I punch it in, and, I was, and all of a sudden these pictures show up. I was like, oh. Oh, oh! This is a legit concert. Oh, yeah. okay. Now it's not I, just a clown party. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I said, you know what? I got, I said, I got to be honest with you. This isn't the first time that I've been in a parking lot when a fat guy with a beard comes up to me and tells me he wants to play at his clown party in the middle of the fucking you know forest. This is this is this is this is a daily for me. <laughs> and, and they all found the humor, but I mean, it was really the truth. This is you know this, this was nothing new to me, and so then all of a sudden I just started playing all these uh, gathering things, and I wound up doing a tour with them in Canada, and then um, we did Juggalo Day and Vegas, and then yeah Las Vegas, and then uh, they're coming we out just here did a whole it, tour in with like them. a couple weeks. They're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. Be out here. yeah. Uh, great crowd. Uh, I, I can honestly say that I love the Juggalo crowd more than I love the Green Jello crowd. <laughs> And why is that? <laughs> because they're way better, man. They're super, they're super <laughs> fucking juggalos sure. are awesome. So juggalos uh, are there. That everybody's hugging. Everybody's saying hi. Everybody's friends. You know, you don't feel like a, a stranger at a concert. You know, uh, you, you feel like you're just there with a bunch of your friends, all having a great time. Yeah, you? surrounded by family. Yeah, yeah. It really, it's true. The whole family. Yeah. yeah and they embrace, they embrace yeah, Green no, Jello. Yeah. We, we had a marvelous time. I love the Juggalos. Because there have been a lot of acts that, like, even Andrew WK got shit thrown at him. Oh, like, yeah. it, there's. You know, uh, when you swim with the sharks, you're either going to have a really nice time and you're going to talk about how you pet them and how you made a friend, or you're going to get your leg gnawed off. <laughs> it's one of the two. Yeah. And it's the risk that you take every time that you play for the juggalo. So there was never a time that I took a risk that I was going to perform less than I expected to yeah. do. You know, I always gave my best. And so uh, that always worked out for me. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's swimming like it's swimming with sharks. Did I, you I say it every night when we play with them? Now, did you go that first time you played at the gathering, the clown party in the woods? Did you. Did you know that the crowd can sometimes be volatile, or did you just I, go in there and well, just like... You know what? I, I just show up and I do my thing. I don't really put much thought into anything that right. I do. In fact, I don't even know the places that I'm playing. I, I I land in the airplane, and somebody just picks me up, and they and they bring me there. And he'll he'll testify. I mean, we're we're flying to where tomorrow? Uh, Baltimore. We're, we're flying to Baltimore tomorrow, and where are we playing? Pennsylvania, somewhere. Damn, damn. I have no... I have no idea. But it must have gone well, the first gathering you so, did. But, but again, uh, I, I don't plan, so I, I just sort of uh, showed up. And um, so they decided that I was going to play it on the first night, which was a Wednesday, and that I was going to play it 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's and, the time they put tent, us on. Yeah, All the way in the back. Yep. And I was like, all right, not a problem. During and I showed up, and there wasn't one well. person in that fucking tent. But... Ten minutes later, all then I said, "Turn that microphone on." And I was just like, "Ba ba ba ba!" Screaming my head off, being obnoxious and loud. Yeah, yeah. And ten minutes later, the tent was packed, and um, I had one of the best shows of my entire life. You have like eighty-eight puppets or some shit like that. Yes, yes, yes. Insane. An incredible amount of puppets. Now, when you're traveling, you just bring puppets. That's it. Puppets and a pair of pants. But no, like guitars, no musical instruments, just the puppets. 
All the guitars. Musical are, instruments. Yeah, that's all waiting for you. What are you talking yeah. about? You can't play shit. Band stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. She <laughs> must be talking about a different green jello. Skin flute. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just bring puppets. But I, I really think that's an amazing thing. The the whole idea of the franchise band in every city. Yeah, yeah, just show up. And then you got a you got a new group of guys every single week. So if last week they sucked, uh you got a new band this week. <laughs> true, and if this week the guitar player fucked the drummer's wife, well next week you got another band. They don't care. So every week the drama from last week is left behind. In fact, there's not even like bullshit. You're like, yeah, yeah it's fucking Eddie. He, you know, you took my Snickers bar, man, and you and you got to hear about Eddie stealing the Snickers for three bar weeks. for fucking three weeks <laughs> yeah. every fucking day on the road. But you know what? Eddie's Snicker bar missing ends on fucking Saturday night. <laughs> Cause I get on the plane on Sunday morning and I'm home. And everyone who you have in your band is like, you know, like you said, there were ten when the the record came out. They're super excited to be a part of it. Yes, and you and you're giving them a stake in it as well. You're yeah, letting, yeah, letting they could them. they could potentially make all the money they want because they could sell all the merch they 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 can create and and they could keep it. I, I couldn't care less. And they can say I'm in fucking green. No, Jello. no, they are in green Jello. They, see, they are in. They green are in green Jello. They can uh, write songs. They can sell merch. You know. Whatever, whatever, whatever they want to be. They could use the green jello. I don't care. That's amazing. And I will agree with them 100%. And, and I'm proud to have them in the band. And then I divvy out all the costumes, too. So, you know, I, I used to wear all of them. But now, you know, this guy is the cow god. And that guy's shake man. And this guy is two cans on the sand. You know, and so not only can the guitar player go home with the one of 20, and the and the seven drummers, but you know now there's a whole cast of people saying, oh, "I was the cow that night. I was the pig." Yeah, just and, audience members. Yeah. So every time that I play, there's a good thirty people that get to embrace get to be part their of the show, childhood, me- their moment that they get to be ten again, watching the video in secret. Except for now, they're in the band. Is it, so that dream of them pretending that they were in the band. You know, at their house, singing the songs, doing the air. It's just not true. Is that is it weird for me to think that that's a noble thing? Uh, you know what? Uh, like, I, I just want to be able to uh, inspire people that, that lost their way. You know, because everybody's creative. Uh, everybody's um, has a, a drive to do something musically or, or with art. And then suddenly... Uh, Life comes along and the big brother or the cousin or the boss tells you it's stupid and you're doing it wrong. You're never going to get any place with that. And you hear all this negative shit. And all of a sudden, by the time you're 20, you're just so, uh, you know, uh, all, everything that you wanted to do creative is, is so buried by other people's hate uh, that you get uh, lost in the world. And, and you, now you got a flat screen TV and, and a couch and, and, a, and a Honda Civic. Fuck. That sucks. <laughs> you know? Amen. And, and, I, and I give them that moment back. So now they're the cow god or they're playing that guitar or they're playing the drum or they're singing their Green Jello song. And now they don't, they're, they don't own a Honda Civic. They don't have a flat screen TV. They're, they're just living in their dream and their moment. And maybe after the show, they'll go home. They'll make something. Maybe they'll write a song. Maybe they'll start a band. Maybe they'll forget that it's dumb and go back to doing it because they like to do it and i do it i i i do it i started doing it when i was five years old and i've never fucking stopped i remember being told in high school mr man speaker you think you're gonna make an ass out of yourself for the rest of your life and make a living at this and i'm like yes yes i do (laughs) i'm very confident that i can do this very successfully and look at you. <laughs> and, 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 and I do. Every you know, 125 times a year, I play a show somewhere around the world. Canada, Mexico, England, United States, Europe. Uh, me and my family were living in uh, Prague, Czech Republic uh, this summer until they kicked us out. Kicked us out! We'll be back. We're coming back. You were, know, were, you were, just can't fucking move you anywhere too? you want. Yeah. Why you that? can't because they got fucking rules. They, you, they, you can't live. You can't just 
fly to Europe and, and live there. You can't. You can just get an apartment and and and, and start living. Nope. Ninety days. That's yeah, all you, you got. need to get some sort of work visa. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Well, uh, well, well he, here's my puppet. <laughs> I yell at drunk people dressed up as farm animals dressed in <laughs> duct tape costumes. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, the freedoms that we possess, even as Americans, is all kind of bullshit. But everybody, everybody moves here. Nobody complains. Yeah. So I was like, fine, I'm, just, I'm moving to Prague. See you later. Get the fuck out. How long were you there for? <laughs> 90 days. <laughs> oh, wow. So they, they were ready. Oh, yeah. No, they told me on my 89th. Oh, my jeez. It's <laughs> like, fuck. Really? What am I going to do with my apartment? <laughs> oh, I got to just leave it? Fuck. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'll be back. No big deal. We'll be back for another 90 days. Yep. 2020. <laughs> Better than going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Fine and kicked out. Yeah. Did you watch that Alex Hernandez documentary on Netflix? The sports guy? The football player who mm. killed a bunch of people like oh, while yeah. he was playing for the Patriots. He like had multiple murders under his belt like while he was on national TV, like wow. all-star uh, tight end. And it turns out it was all because of like closet homosexuality and, and uh, abuse as a child. And, and on top of it, he was hit a bunch of times. So his brain is, yeah. yeah, concussions. His brain was significantly smaller when they told So he was a, he was a, Serial killer is what you're saying? Mm, kind of. I don't know if he's a serial killer. But well, I mean, yeah, he killed multiple people. He killed like four or five wow. people. But this is all while he Sports. was... He, he had a $40, $40 million contract for the Patriots, and he's like, he's shooting people on the street. Like, he just sh- would like shoot any of these guys' cars because they like spilled a drink on him at a club. Like, just totally... Like the the whole concussion thing, yeah. Like you, you. He sounded like a child when he was talking to his mother. They they recorded all the jail conversations. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I don't know why I just brought that up, but <laughs> definitely check in it out band. on Netflix. In the back of a van. What are you trying? Where are you getting that man? <laughs> no, I'm gonna. We're, we're nice. La- <laughs> Lazy D wouldn't lead you astray. He nope. Lazy D. Yeah, this La- is my boy, even though I annoy the shit out of it most of the La- time. Lazy D would will put a sticker on your fucking <laughs> instrument, but he, you know he won't. I, oh, I know he's uh, my instrument. Does it have Does it have a Lazy D sticker on it? It does. Lazy D owes him five bucks. So what's next for Green Green Jell? Uh, Lazy D, are you are you like? We're gonna get on a plane and go to Baltimore. Yeah, we're going to Baltimore. Uh, now are you five hours? Are you trying to do as many shows as you can? I pretty much oh, in the last yeah. few years, I've probably done about 75% of the shows. Yeah. Because now, Not you know, many, that's many, the beautiful many. thing about being lazy. Uh, no, pun, <laughs> no pun intended. That is just me, you know? Yeah. So I could show up even when I was doing the rap shit, you know? Just and, show up and play. And you're on, you're on, you have a microphone when you're on stage. Right? Yeah, I kind of basically like the drunk Flavor Flav. Hi, <laughs> hype man kind of thing. Do you have a clock? I do actually. Do yeah. Oh, for real? You, yeah. wear, you, wear, you wear a clock? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Somebody made one for me. It's great. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just easy to like, because before when I was playing, you know how it is, fucking driving everywhere. So, are there any other members that are around you as much as this guy there, Bill? Nope. This is it. Yeah. He's like I said, he's like my adopted dad. And you're okay with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, it's, he loves me. He wants to do to. Uh, Live their childhood dreams. If I someone could help, that's great. Follow me around. Yep. No problem. I got our stage time three times a week. Yep. I'll give it to you. Whatever you need. Yeah, I, I was actually uh, telling him the other day I've uh, been cleaning up my basement and I found a bunch of old notebooks from high school. And I'm going to go through them because I guarantee you there's probably a yuck drawn on one of those notebooks somewhere. You know, Same little green jello doodles that you did on your notebooks I did on my notebook. Exactly. It's crazy. Mine was the first. Yep. <laughs> Small world. Yeah, who'd have fucking yeah, thought? I drew that same symbol. Yeah, who'd have thought, yeah, I'd be playing in that band when I was a kid. Would, it's crazy. Well, that's... It's fun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm blown away by all of it. I thought what, and what you had to say about gi- giving someone a chance to escape from their fucking day job hell. No, it's true. I think that... 100%. That was... 
like I know there's a lot of joking around in this van, but that's just really poignant because to me the, the the escape of being on stage and being able to like yeah. be that kid screaming yeah, right. from the inside of your soul right. that that's the reason why after however many years like I'm still doing my dumb band right you that, do it because you love it right yeah and then, but all of a sudden they clicked on me it's like wow not only can I continue to do it because I love it but I could share it and I could share it every day I go out with. Not one person I could share it with 10 or 20. And I do. Yep. So this weekend when I go out, I'm going to share that moment with God. I'm going to say at least 50 people. That's I, I'm Sharing my moment with yeah. them. Yeah. It's, it's okay really to fun too because... We all have the moment together and, as a team. And that's so the antithesis of, of so much of the rock star mentality. It's like... like it's punk rock. Yeah, so but, punk rock. But to like the nth degree, like y y it isn't about you at all. No, anymore. no, no. It's you're not like about the, me at all. You're the ringleader. I had my the I, puppet I, yeah. master. Since I was in 1981, since I was 12th grade, I had my moment a million times, over and over and over and over. Yeah, and, you know, and I could either hoard that moment and and be selfish with it, or I could learn to share it with everyone, with complete strangers that I meet instantly. Yeah. Not, not set up people that, that go through contests and all this rigor mortis to, to get to the top. No, just, uh, oh, hey, man, I like your band. <laughs> Do you want to be in the show? Mm. What? Yeah. It makes for a really fun and interesting because, like, no two shows are the same. Oh, hell no. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's always yeah. something different. And, and then, like, everybody making their own merch. You're, like, I get surprised when I go to shows. I'm like, shit, yeah, I haven't seen that shirt yet. Yeah. That's cool. I haven't seen that yet. So it's don't always different. What you do in the band, you can make your merch. And so every time, every weekend, there's a whole different spew of merch that all done by different artists uh, uh, doing their take on what a green jello shirt or a button or a poster should look like. And then they're selling it, their own art. And then they're making money to uh, pay for their gas or their hotel or their food or, or generate their own cash yep. by being an artist. Right? So you're giving a lot of people a platform to, yeah. to, to be exactly to be kids, to, yeah. to play. Yes. That's amazing. It yes. Amazing. Wow. I'm inspired. It's all, and it's about how you use the platform. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Maynard used that platform well, right? Uh, yeah. And so did Danny and Adam. You know, uh, they they used that platform decades ago. And the same platform uh, applies today. You know, if you have that ambition, there you go. Here's here's a place that. Uh, you can uh, make a song, or you can make some merchandise, or you can perform, and you, you'll have an audience. As for like, if you draw, if you drew this, you know, alien, and you try to sell it on Facebook for five dollars, nobody will buy it. But now you draw that alien, and you you get right to right green jello on it. Now you sell for twenty dollars, and it's just the same art. But now it's 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 working for you. And all you needed to do was stick a brand on it. And I'm willing to do that. Go ahead, stick my brand in. Go ahead and make all the money you want. Branding somehow, is yeah. key. Yeah, it is. But yeah, but it is. It really is. It, ge it gives it legitimacy. Like, You know, we have this uh, Viking in Pennsylvania that sings Disney songs. Thomas the Red. Thomas the Red, correct. And uh, we met him at one of the shows. And now we put him in the band. So before he would do his singing Disney uh, show tunes dressed as a gigantic Viking. He's a very large man, burly, and he's got all the pelts and the swords. You know, now he's doing the same gig, but now it's in front of Green Gel, so it's part of that. So are you giving him stage time. some stage time yeah. to, to do his own thing? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what Disney songs is he singing? I can oh. show you a sword. Oh, okay, so he makes it like a Viking style. Parody, yeah. It's great, and he sings, awesome. he sings magnificent. Oh, he sings it well. Oh, yeah. Oh, way, he way he could sing, me. like, we'll go out afterwards, we'll go to, like, karaoke bars, yeah. and do that shit in yeah. full outfit. What city is At this guy from? Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, I think he's yeah, out, I think he lives, like, 10 minutes from, like, Scranton or something yeah. like that. Yeah, Scranton. Yeah. Stumbled across him, and now he's done at least 20 shows with us or more. So it's just ICP shows. Yeah, he did He's it. come out during so ICP. He, he, he did that for and, the Juggalos. Oh, that was yeah. great! I remember it being really quiet. Someone was like, "What the fuck?" And everyone was like, "Yeah!" 
great. That's wonderful. Yep. So yeah, yeah, adding yet another unique element to the green jello. It's, it's kind of like always a, changing. Yeah, it's like a th- three ring circus is how I like to think of it. That's beautiful. Yep. Well, I'm pissed because I I thought I, I wish you would have told me like when you got into town that the show was fucking last week. <laughs> but we're about to move. Yeah, like, you well, said you were busy moving and stuff. Yeah, our brains are all stupid. Yeah, right I've never now. been to Hollywood either. So how'd the show go? It was oh, pretty. It was great. great. Yeah. It was great. It was very. Then I hung out on the strip and spent way too much money. Yeah, the whiskey. That's 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 where the doors got signed. I mean, that's that's yeah. Hollywood legendary shit. That's uh, you know Motley Crue. And that Went to the stuff. Rainbow Room. I did not see Ron Jeremy. I'm very disappointed. Now, did you see the Lemmy statue though? I did. I did. I hung out. Did you have one of his signature drinks? I did not have one of those, but it was ten dollar beer night. So <laughs> I had a ten dollar beer, which that's, fucking uh, sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of money for a beer. Yeah, not Kentucky prices for sure. <laughs> you mean Cincinnati prices? Yeah, Cincinnati. The nasty natty. You can get a shot and a beer for What's five bucks. What's that river called? The Ohio River? That's the Ohio River. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a warp tour and we actually like went swimming in that river. Oh, that was a big mistake. Yeah, is it dirty? It's very dirty. It's dirty. We were dirty, <laughs> dirty then. Like my mom. Yeah. We were dirty then. Dirty. Well, fuck. I, we've been rolling for like an hour. I don't know. I, All right. Um, <laughs> we're good. Yeah. If, if we're I gotta go to sleep. If we're good, we're good. I really appreciate your time, and I appreciate Lazy D for connecting with yeah, us. for sure, dots. man. Always love Janebo. We got to get up in four hours. Yep. Okay, so when time, what time does the plane leave? 6.30, I think. 6.30. Yeah. And what, what uh, anything LAX. else? Anything else notable? At, like, after, like, you're just doing three gigs a week, like, straight. I do every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 125 times a year since 2008. All in an airplane. So yep. every Thursday I hop on a plane. I fly somewhere in the United States, Mexico, Canada, Europe. Play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right after the show, I hop on the plane and I'm back by noon. Wow. So the year before last, I got real cocky and I said, I think I'll try one of those weekend things in Europe. And so we flew and we played Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Europe. And then we flew home Sunday. But that's like a 12-hour flight. Oh, yeah. Oh yikes! Terrible. So that's when I, that's when I decided to move there and just tour there. And yeah, that's what I was doing, and then they kicked me out. <laughs> Jerks. Mm-hmm. So about, uh, you're re-releasing a record, doing record store this. this oh, uh, record store day is going to be re-releasing a record that we released in 1989 called Green Jello Triple Live Mother Goose at Budokan. It's not live. There's not three records. <laughs> <laughs> Remastered. And it's just basically all the songs off a of serial killer before uh, that we spent a thousand dollars to record, and then serial killer we spent twenty thousand dollars, and that was the difference of the. Okay, but that's going to be a vinyl release. So vinyl I, release yeah, on Record Store Day. Repressing new sure. cover art, remastered as well. Sure. So how many to- how many total shows a year would you say you play? I do one hundred and twenty five shows a year for okay. the last twelve years. So every week, every week you're doing th- every single week. Three dates. Every single week. Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. That's amazing. That I book 100% on Facebook. Okay, so you're you're the agent for all I of it. I book all the shows. Oh, real quick, before you go, um, there was a video online of you, there was like a deadbeat promoter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can we talk oh, about that? That was recently. Can we talk about that? Was that was like a month ago. I know, right? I know, you, gotta, yeah, yeah. I know you gotta go to bed, but yeah, I just well, want to... Well, it's basically this is, uh, I require the, everyone to pay me half up front. And that way, if I show up and you decide not to pay me, well, I, at least I got half of it, and I don't really care, and I leave. So this guy, I didn't get half up front. And so I said, before I get on the plane, fly 3,000 miles, and then get over the, the Canadian border and drive three hours, we're all good. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're fine. We show up, a lot of people, we play the show. Show's over, poof, he's gone. This is in Canada. Canada. It's supposed to be uh, nice over London, there. Ontario, to be specific. So, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm good because, you know, usually they pay me up half, you know, up front. And if they leave, oh, well, no sweat. But this guy didn't pay me anything. Don't get any ideas. And he left. So he didn't even say, you know, this is the issue, blah, 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 blah. So that sort of aggravated me. So uh, I woke up in the morning, and I found out where he lived, and I went and I knocked on his door. And then um, I nicely asked him to go into a car, and he willingly got inside. 
and um, we were just going to stop by the river to fish. <laughs> this is yeah. all on video. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But we were going to the river to fish, and he got willingly in the car. And um, <laughs> we were talking about uh, a, a, a hypothesis uh, of maybe <laughs> what would happen if he would fall and hurt his kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we um, um, guided him into a dark area <laughs> that, that wasn't lit yet. Because we didn't turn the light switch on, and then um, we we lost um, feed by some technical difficulty. Uh, he then happily paid us. He said that he had accidentally left it at the bar, and then um, I left, and I am still al- I'm still allowed in Canada, kinda. Maybe. Well, I'm not. I I can't go to Canada. <laughs> oh, so you're, you're avoiding Canada? After no, that. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed in Canada or the state of Kentucky. Oh wow! But those are two it's different. True. Those, those are two different incidents. Well, yeah, you, very similar. Well, you heard it right there. Bill Manspeaker is not allowed in Canada. <laughs> I stayed out of that mess. I would. I I stayed asleep. Yeah, because I didn't. I didn't get through the whole video. I didn't know how. Like what the. Ending. It had a very happy ending. We we um everybody came to a mutual agreement and um we we uh, parted successfully. Yep. So if if you're gonna make a deal, hold up your end. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna fucking come to your house and knock on your fucking door, rip your fucking little pig, little pig, let me in. Hug you. Hug you. No. He loves hugs. No, hug you hard. Hug you hard. <laughs> well, you heard it right there. It these motherfuckers got to go to bed because they got to go to LAX, which is a nightmare. And yes, it, and, and you do it every week. Plane. Every week. Oh, jeez. Every week. I do a quarter million miles a year. It's amazing. For the last twelve years. So many miles. That's to the moon and back four times. Gotten all them. You did the math. Points. Yes. Yeah. I love you- math. You guys got some math? No, no math. I in thought here. that's why we got in this van because they said they had math. <laughs> well, well, we uh, see, how go, see how it went all, they got the story go all the way back around. Yeah, yeah. We walked in there looking. That was for good. Math. You're looking for Patel. math. We're ending on the math. They're leaving. That's and why you have he's it right, a genius. You have it right there, Green Jello, Bill Manspeaker. We got Lazy D here. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, mom. Thank you for the Thank stories you. and Thank the you. inspiration Thank as you. always. Give me a hug, Nebo. I love you. It's great to see you. Ah. Thank you, good night. Yeah. So, yeah, the, it was right there. A little bit forward. <laughs> it's recessed into the door. There you go. All right. Thanks, Bill. You guys have fun in uh, in Pennsylvania. Pencil, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And uh, have a safe walk back. Do you live here? Yeah, I'm in, uh, about to move to Long Beach. I'll be there on Saturday. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah, cool. yeah. Yes, sir. Well... You know where to find me on Facebook, right? It's true. Hang out. Hi, I'm Bill. This is Allie. Hi, I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi. Nice to meet you. That's good. That's Thank fun. you. Thanks Hi, again, guys. man. Bye. No problem. Well, you hang guys out have when fun. I come back. Safe travel. Yeah, I'm around, dude. All right, cool. I just got laid off. All right, brother. Bye. Nice meeting you. Same. Yeah, take it easy, man. Love you, bro. Love you. Take it Thank easy. You, man. I'll Thank see you. you on the road. All right, man. Bye. Bye, guys.